Since the iPhone 10 doesn't have a home button, a lot of the familiar moves that we're comfortable with as far as how to navigate the phone are no longer applicable. So Apple has designed a series of gestures to allow us to navigate the phone in all the ways that we used to be able to, and it's added a few new tricks as well. Now let's start with the basics, just getting back to the home page. Let's say you're in an app like Photos and you want to go back home. Well, all you have to do now is simply swipe up, and that's it, you're back to home. If I'm in Safari and want to go back to the home page, simply swipe up, and we're there, and that's it. Now, that may seem like a big, huge change, and on the surface it is, but let me tell you why I got used to this very quickly and why I think that you will too. You go to the home button with your thumb, right? And you would swipe up from the bottom with your thumb as well. So when you go to hit that home button and you instinctively take your thumb and move it to the bottom of the screen, where you used to land on the home button, you're not gonna hit that home button, you're just gonna hit smooth glass. And probably long before you actually hit it, you're gonna remember, oh wait, this is an iPhone 10. there is no home button. So you're already halfway there, you're already moving your thumb in the right way, now all you have to do is swipe up instead of pressing down. And honestly, it's something that I even thought that it would take a long time to get used to, but I've gotten used to it in a matter of just having it for a short time. So really it's something you get used to quite quickly. Now let's look at how to switch apps. This is a little bit trickier, but again, not as tricky as you might think it is. Let's say I'm back in Photos and I want to switch to another app. If I swipe up part way and pause, you'll see the app switcher come up, and this allows me to switch between any of the apps that I currently have running. Now, at first glance, this seems like it's a little bit complicated. I mean, let's go back to the home screen, open up another app, swipe up and pause, and you have to wait for it, but you don't really actually have to go through all that. Watch this, if I just swipe up and let go, it's there. All you have to do is not go too far. If you go too far, then yeah, you're gonna go to the home screen, but if you go back into your app and swipe up a little bit, the switcher comes up. This works from the home screen as well. If I swipe up part way, the switcher comes back up. So it's a little bit different and it does take a little getting used to, but a quick swipe up and you're into there. Now there's another way you can switch apps as well, and that's by simply swiping across the bottom of the screen. This bottom area here is kind of an app switcher, and if I just swipe over, swipe over, swipe over, and allows me to switch between the apps. Now, there's one other way that you can switch apps as well. This one's a little bit more curious, but it's the same idea as swiping across, except that you swipe in an arc up and over. Let me show you. I can simply swipe up and over to switch to the previous app. I'm not quite sure what the benefit is versus doing it this way or this way, other than a slightly different animation, but you do have that different movement. And by the way, you can go back this way as well. You can swipe up and over, up and over, or just swipe along the bottom to go back. Of course, as soon as you do anything in the app that you've just switched to, you have no longer have anywhere to swipe back to. So that's something to remember. Next, let's talk about how you quit apps, because quitting apps is probably the most different thing that I've come across so far. So let's go back into the app switcher, and once we're in the switcher, you're used to quitting apps by simply swiping up on them. But as you see, that app just went home. Hold on a second, let's go back into the app switcher again and Photos is still there. What happened here? Well, to quit apps now, you have to tap and hold on the app first, and then you get a series of cancel or delete buttons across the top. At this point, you can tap on one of those to quit the app, or swipe up and get rid of it, as we're used to. Now, I'm honestly not sure why they made this difference. It certainly doesn't seem like you couldn't have the same just swipe up to quit gesture that we've always had, but that's the way it is. So if you're trying to quit your apps, tap and hold on it for a second, and then tap that little cancel button, or swipe up to get rid of it. We're used to getting to the notification center by swiping down from the top of the screen, and we're used to getting into the control center by swiping up from the bottom of the screen. We've already seen, though, that swiping up from the bottom brings us to the home button, so where's notifications and control center? Well, now they both come from the top, but from different parts of the top of the screen. So let's take a look. If I swipe down from the middle of the screen, it brings up notification center. The same thing happens if I drag down from the left side of the screen. However, if I drag down from the right side of the screen, that's what brings up my control center. So you have two different parts of the screen to touch on, anywhere across the middle all the way over to the left to bring notifications, or only the right-hand side to bring up the control center. To dismiss it, simply swipe up and it goes away. So that covers all the gestures that I wanted to show you. Next, let's talk about the actual physical buttons because there are, again, some differences here in how these work, starting with what they're called. First of all, you have your volume up and volume down button, as you've always had. Now the button on the right-hand side, even though it does still appear to be the power button, is actually called the sleep-wake button, or simply the side button. I've seen it referred to as both. But it really is no longer a power button, even though that is the button you would use to power it on. Anyway, it just does a lot more now. So let's take a look at the things that you can do with these three buttons that we have now. Since we've lost the home button, the three remaining buttons have to take over all of their controls, starting with a screenshot. To take a screenshot, you simultaneously press the up volume button and the side button. 
Press those together and you've got your screenshot. Next, to activate Siri, you can simply say, hey Siri, as you always could. Or you can now press and hold the side button. And Siri wakes up for you. Here's what I found on the web for the side button. <laughs> Thanks, Siri. To turn the phone off, instead of just pressing and holding on the side button, which as you saw is going to simply activate Siri, you need to press and hold on the side button and the volume down button. So if I press and hold both of these for a couple of seconds, I'll get the power off screen as well as the medical ID and the SOS tab, or we can simply cancel out of that. Next, let's talk about Apple Pay. Now, Apple Pay has actually seen an improvement here that I'm really, really happy about. So you may recall that it used to be to open Apple Pay, you had to double tap on the home button. However, you had to double tap on the home button while the phone was locked. If you did that when the phone was unlocked, then it brought up the app switcher. So that meant that if you had your phone in your hand unlocked and you were using it and you now wanted Apple Pay, you had to first lock your phone and then open Apple Pay by double tapping on the home button. And if you weren't quick enough or you were too quick or the timing wasn't right, all it would do is unlock your phone and then you have to lock it and try again. I, in fact, had ended up putting the wallet icon just on my main home screen just so that I could get to it quickly so I don't have to deal with that anymore. But now with the iPhone 10, this is a much better experience. On the iPhone 10, you simply double tap on the side button to bring up Apple Pay. And this works whether you're locked or unlocked. Let me show you. The phone is, of course, unlocked. And if I double tap the side button, you'll see it takes me right into Apple Pay, even though the phone was awake. I can go ahead and close that out now, cancel it by simply swiping up like any other app. And if I was in the lock screen and I double tap that, again, it is going to bring up Apple Pay. That is, in my opinion, a great improvement for Apple Pay. I'm excited about it because I use it all the time and this certainly makes it easier and more reliable to get to. Now, there's a couple other commands that I wanna show you. You may recall that in iOS 11, Apple introduced a feature where you could tap on your power button five times and that would lock your iPhone completely, meaning it would lock out Touch ID, or in this case, Face ID, meaning that you needed your password to get back into the phone. This is a security measure, and that is still here. It doesn't matter if the phone is unlocked or locked. Either way, if I press this button five times, it has now just locked me out completely. Now, you notice that it brings up the slide to power off and the medical ID and the emergency SOS. However, the key thing here is that if I try to open this, it says passcode is required to enable Face ID. Hitting that side button five times like that locks out Face ID. It means that no one can get into your phone without knowing your password. Finally, the last one is how to force reset your iPhone. This is something that you used to do by pressing and holding on the home button and on the power button simultaneously for 10 seconds, and that would force it to restart. To do it now on the iPhone 10, it's a little overly complicated, and I really don't understand quite why it is this way, but it's kind of like an old game cheat code. You first have to press the volume up and then the volume down, and then press and hold on the power button on the side. You hold it for about five seconds and it will reboot. And this seems like an awfully strange way to have to reset your iPhone, but that's the way it works. Again, I really can't explain why. It seems like just pressing and holding on a couple of the side buttons at the same time would do it, but this is how it is. Up, down, power for five seconds, and off you go. I hope these tips have been helpful to you. If you know of any that I missed, please put them in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe and like this video, and check out the rest of my iPhone 10 mini tutorials.